Hello everybody and welcome back to another installment of the Damage Control Assistant Senior Enlisted Curriculum. I'm Lieutenant Timothy Mueller and I'll be the instructor for Lesson 5 of Chapter 1 where I talk about the initial stability of a vessel. All right, in the last lesson, we had talked about the metacenter. We thought that that is the center of the circle or the center of the arc through which the center of buoyancy swings when a vessel is inclined at small angles. We also looked at the writing arm and also the writing moment and how that is related to movements in G along the center line of a ship. I also kind of hinted at what if that G goes higher than the metacenter? Well, I'm going to look at that today. Yeah. To look at proper stability and thinking of what is a, a ship that has stable equilibrium. What is a ship that's going to write itself? There's a quick acronym that you can think of. Proper stability makes good boats. And that is the metacenter gravity buoyancy from the top down. As long as you have those reference points in that order, you're going to have stable equilibrium and the ship is going to want to right itself back to an even keel on center line as long as the center of gravity is along that center line. So going from the top down, we have makes good boats. So just keep that in mind through this next coming lessons and next coming chapters. Always remember, as long as the center of gravity is below the metacenter, we're good. The GM, the distance from the center of gravity up to the metacenter is, I said it before and I'll say it again, extremely important. This metacentric height is a number that you can look at day after day, hour after hour, and see, am I getting more stable or less stable? Let's look at three cases of initial stability. Initial stability being in that range from zero to seven degrees, maybe zero to 10 degrees, depending on hull shape. Okay. So go back to this acronym, make good boats. If we have this acronym in the right order, so meta center higher than, the than center of gravity, we have a positive GM. This gives us stable equilibrium, and this is the condition that we have. We have the center of gravity pointing down, center of buoyancy pointing up through that meta center, this is going to give us what's called a writing moment that we talked about before, and it's going to bring us back to that equilibrium point on center on even keel. If we start rotating the other way, the center of buoyancy is going to swing through that arc the other way, and we're just going to have the same diagram, but just flipped. And we're going to have a moment coming back to our equilibrium point. So that's what happens if we have a positive GM, a stable equilibrium. Next up, we have the second case. And this is a very, very small, almost like a, um, a limit between stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium. And this is neutral stability. This is when the center of gravity is perfectly at the meta center of a ship. We have a GM equals zero. So we think back to our formula for writing arm. We know that GZ equals GM times the sine of theta. If that GM is zero, then our writing arm is zero, which means that we have no writing moment. In that case, the ship is never going to want to go back to an even keel. Wherever it's at, as long as that meta center is staying the same and the center of gravity is staying the same, it's always just wanting to want to stay there. You can kind of think of like a, uh, like a tennis ball on the top of a table. If you take a tennis ball and you roll it a little bit, it's not going to want to go back to that equilibrium point. It's just going to want to stay right there. The same concept is loosely applies to a ship that's in neutral stability. If I roll it over, I have the center of gravity right at the meta center and the center of buoyancy. That center of buoyancy, as long as it's in that small range of angles, always acts through that meta center. If the center of gravity is at that meta center as well, we always have equal forces opposing each other along the same lines, which means that there's no net force, which means there's no moment, which means that there is no there's nothing making this ship want to go back onto its center line. If it rolls over that way, it's just going to stay there. If it goes a little bit further, as long as the meta center stays there, it's going to want to stay there as well. If something rolls it back over, it's going to want to stay there as well. Same as on the other side. So neutral stability, it needs that center of gravity to be precisely on the meta center. If it's not precisely on the meta center, you're either in unstable equilibrium or stable equilibrium. And last but certainly not least, 
is case number three. This is when we have a negative GM, or when our center of gravity is up so high that it's actually above the metacenter. We know this, the force of buoyancy always acts up through the metacenter. Similarly, through the center of gravity, gravity always acts down. These are equal and opposite forces. So let's draw this diagram, but with G all the way up. If we're here and we have G above the metacenter, we have buoyancy pointing up and G pointing down. So even though we're inclined this far, there's still a moment that's gonna to wanna to force us back over, which is gonna be causing what's called an upsetting moment, which is gonna push us further and further over. Now, just because G is higher than the metacenter in its initial stability, it doesn't mean that the ship is gonna capsize. We're gonna look at that in a few seconds because the metacenter actually, when you're beyond those small angles, is gonna travel along a line called the metacentric. So just because your GM might be negative, and there are several ships that actually operate with, it, with a negative GM. They're typically cargo ships. If you see them with, they're riding very, very high on the water, you'll see them kind of listed over to one side. That's due to a negative GM. Like I said, a negative GM doesn't mean your ship is gonna capsize. However, it's a very good explanation for a list that you have if you can't attribute it to a direct off-center weight. All right, now let's bring this into a small little model here that I have to show off stable and unstable equilibrium. So this is a ship. We know that the center of buoyancy is gonna swing through an arc. This arc is right down here. If we incline the ship over, since it's on a table, it's not in the water, the center of buoyancy is going to be the point where this model touches the table. So it's going to be pointing up through yeah, the meta center. Okay. So we move over here. Even though this is a little bit more than the zero to seven degrees, just showing you here, you see at that point, going right through the meta center. Okay. We have a block that's going to represent the center of gravity. And I can move this up and down as I'd like. And then we have M being the metacenter. So our case one right here is stable equilibrium. That's where we have a positive GM or the G is lower than the metacenter. Let's go right down here. Okay. If we incline this vessel over to one side, we would think it's gonna wanna right itself. And that's what happens. We see, if we take, if we assume this, now this is not exactly the center of gravity, this, uh, the model frame and imparts its own gravity to it. But if we assume that, that G is the center of gravity, then we can see that gravity is pointing down here. And then we have the force of buoyancy, which is gonna be acting right around here, is pushing up through the metacenter. Okay, so we have this buoyancy acting up, Gravity here, pushing down, and it's gonna roll it back. And as it goes the other side, the momentum carries it through that center line. That center of buoyancy, the point where it's hitting the table, is gonna push it back over the other way. Right, now, like I had mentioned, case two, where we have neutral stability, is a very, very fine, precise limit. And I don't have the kind of resolution to show that on this model accurately. So I'm just gonna jump into case three, where we have unstable equilibrium. This is where our center of gravity is above the metacenter, we have unstable equilibrium, so when we incline the ship, there's gonna be a, an upsetting moment instead of a righting moment, an upsetting moment that's gonna to wanna to cause it to go over. Yeah. So if we have this ship right here, we have our center of gravity above our meta center, and if we let it go, it's gonna to wanna to go over. Yeah. Now, using this model, the error in this is that outside of those small angles of inclination, so zero to seven and zero to 10, the meta center in reality for a vessel will move. For this model, it won't. So if the meta center stays still, this vessel would capsize. However, because the meta center moves along what's called the metacentric, just because you have a negative GM doesn't mean you're gonna capsize all the way over like my model here.
Now, unfortunately, that model isn't an exact representation of a vessel that's immersed in water. The meta center always stays the same on that little model, and so when we have G above that meta center, it's going to capsize. In an actual vessel, the meta center, when inclined past those small angles, 0 to 7, 0 to 10, is going to move along metacentric, like I had mentioned. So does a negative GM, GM less than zero, mean call abandoned ship? Not necessarily. However, it is of great concern to anyone aboard that ship. When you have a negative GM, your ship is now outside of a design criteria. So your ship is less likely to survive taking on water, surviving heavy uh, heavy seas or heavy winds, say you get caught in a hurricane or a really bad storm, you might not be able to survive that. Any ship must have a positive GM. The only exception is a cargo ship. Sometimes cargo ships are designed when they're as light as they can possibly be to have a negative GM. If you see them out in the open water, sometimes right in the harbor area, you'll see that they have a list and they're riding extremely high you might even be able to see the top of the rudder post or even some of the turbulence caused by a propeller. They might have what's called an angle of lull, and we'll get there in a second, but that ship has a huge freeboard. That freeboard is reserve buoyancy, like I mentioned in chapter zero, and that gives it a little bit of a chance to fight damage or heavy weather. However, a ship's captain does not want to maintain a negative GM condition for very long. Other than cargo ships, 99.9% .9 of any ship out there has to maintain a positive GM, a positive metacentric height. Okay. So does GM being negative mean abandoned ship? Not necessarily. However, you want to rectify that as quickly as possible. Now I mentioned before this metacentric. The metacenter rides along this line called the metacentric. So we're going to keep our diagram and we're going to imagine that this vessel inclines to starboard. Yeah. So at zero degrees, or zero to seven, zero to 10, we have a meta center that's, let's say right here. If we go past that, the meta center starts to move and it's gonna move along a metacentric. And a typical metacentric looks something like this. If we're, move, if we're inclined to starboard, the metacentric will assume a maximum point right here at maybe say 20 degrees. It depends on the hull, depends on displacement of the ship. There's a lot of factors that go into developing a metacentric. However, for this generic, for this generic diagram that we have, we're gonna say it assumes a maximum actual height of 20 degrees. After 20 degrees, we st it starts to dive and it dies very, very quickly. They have metacentric at 45 here and then metacentric at 90 right here on the center line. When you have a negative GM, you're going to assume an angle of lol is what it's called. So what, what does that mean? What do you mean angle of lol? When we have a negative GM, remember we have that upsetting moment that's going to want to, if we go over from perfectly on center line, if we go over just a tiny bit, it's going to want to push us even further over. As it pushes us further over, it'll push us through that 0 to 7, 0 to 10 range. Then once we get into like that, eh, we're around 11 to 12, that meta center starts to move. So now our center of buoyancy is acting through a different uh, point. And that's because of the, the shape of the water plane is changing so much. And we're gonna get that into that in chapter three. However, that upsetting moment is gonna upset us while that meta center is still in the same spot. Then it's gonna start moving. And that meta center is gonna move up higher. Once it gets to some point where the the vessel itself has found some equilibrium where the center of buoyancy and the center of gravity are directly opposing each other on the same line. Whatever that angle is, typically it's right around like 12, 15, right around there, that is called the angle of lull. An angle of lull only occurs when you have a negative GM. Like I said, typically only ships that you'll see with a negative GM will be cargo ships, and that's when they're riding extremely high. Next time you're out on the water and you see cargo ships that are riding, they have an extreme amount of freeboard, take a look at the transverse perspective of the ship. If it's leaning over to a side, but it doesn't have any containers on it, it probably has a negative GM. And now 
since you've been watching these videos, you kind of have a better idea of the initial stability of that vessel. Is it going to be good if a storm hits? Is that going to be a good condition for the captain to be in or not? Now you're getting the information that you can start looking at different vessels on the ocean, on lakes, anywhere you are, and you can start seeing, okay, this vessel is stable or this vessel is not stable. Here's how I would imp improve the stability of that vessel. Now, as we go on more chapters, we're going to start building upon that knowledge, that foundation of knowledge, so that whenever you do, like, uh, say, rescue and assist missions, or you're approaching different vessels, you can immediately get a snapshot of the initial stability and different stability characteristics of that vessel just by looking at it and applying the knowledge that you've learned even thus far. You can see a lot of things about vessels and just apply it right then and there. All right, so in this lesson, we had talked about good stability makes good boats. And that means the meta center always wants to be above the center of gravity. We looked at three cases. We looked at when the center of gravity is below the meta center, when it's at the meta center, and when it's above the meta center. Then we kind of went into a further, the further description of that third case. When we're upsetting, what happens to the meta center if we don't capsize all the way, what happens? We saw the metacentric and how that metacenter moves. And we also talked about the angle of law. The next video is just going to be a quick summary about what we learned in chapter one, along with a few practice problems to see the math behind all this working. But until then, I'm Lieutenant Timothy Mueller, and I hope you have a great day.